Good morning, my dear future chart accountants. I hope everybody is doing great. Uh, first of all, can you please confirm that my voice is clear and the PPT also is visible? Yes, thank you. So we discussed in the previous session the basics. Financial management, the main objective is to make a decision where we follow cost benefit analysis. Cost, you can say the price, what we pay. Benefit is the value we get. And the value we mean present value in our subject and present value we can obtain by either discounting factor or annuity factor. Discounting factor is applicable for a particular year. Annuity factor is applicable for certain number of years, where every year cash flow is same. Then we discussed the uh, overall concepts of uh, compounding, discounting, compounding more than once a year, half yearly, quarterly, continuously, and also the concept of IRR and the concept of average. Now we are going for a new chapter as per institute study material the chapter name is security valuation so what problem institute has done uh, i'll just explain quickly so you should aware the chapter allocation what i am following what institute is there in the study material so what icai has done uh, they have uh, uh, security valuation where they have considered equity as well as debt and then uh, they come to corporate valuation towards the end chapter 13 is there or chapter 12 and there they are having uh, about equity again so they are having equity in two places sometimes the formulas repeat also so what I have done the security valuation I have excluded uh, or I will just write do one thing. This should make it more clear. Security valuation, they had debt as well as equity. So what I have done, uh, this security valuation plus debt, in, in debt in security valuation, I am calling it as bond valuation. And this corporate equity, everyone and equity valuation, whether it's part of security or corporate valuation, together I'm calling it as corporate valuation. That is basically about equity. Hope you understood the thing what I'm doing. Uh, in this chapter, we will discuss only about bond, fixed income securities. And when we go to the corporate valuation, we will discuss only about equity. So broadly, you are having two investment choices from the investor point of view, bond and I mean, equity and debt. That is what we are discussing in two separate chapters. So first, let's come to the bond valuation. So what I'm trying to do, I'll try to do this for uh, other chapter as well. Initially, I'll try to spend as much as time as possible to give you the overview, comprehensive overview. So I am sure this might be a little boring for some people because I will be discussing too many theory points, uh, too many concepts. Uh, there is one method. I tell the concept, we will do a problem. There is one method. Uh, I would like to give overview first, overall discussion of bond valuation. Then we can take a problem based on that. Of course, when I'm explaining also, I'll be uh, taking numericals to make you understand the concept. So bear with me, first let's go through the concepts in detail and then we'll take up the problems. There again I'll explain the concept so that it will be a kind of revision as well as you will be able to do the problems. But I understand you are uh, in the morning session struggling yourself to sit in some place, uh, putting all the efforts 
to listen to my voice it's hard it's not easy but put your best efforts okay so let's come to the bond so we are having two sets of people here one let's say investor and the other one is let's say company or let's say issuer company investor issuer <clears throat> now the instrument what we are having is bond so investor gives the money issue to the issuer that's what is bond initially so investor invest or issuer raise the money bonds so they make the amount issuer raise the money issuer raise the money by issuing the bonds and what the investor gets is regular payments what he will get back he will get back regular payments uh, that is called as coupon basically like interest what you say but i don't use the word interest why i'll tell you later so coupon is paid regularly periodically yearly half yearly and one time full amount is paid that is redemption price <coughs> redemption price that is uh, <coughs> on maturity now please tell me is this very similar to the company taking loan from the bank company takes loan from the bank and they pay interest and they repay the money on maturity this coupon is fixed it is a percentage applicable on face value and this is like a loan this is like a debt or this will have some sort of security also we have secured bond as well as unsecured bond now please tell me what do you think is this very similar to loan or if not how it is different from loan company taking a loan from a bank they raise money what do you think is it same as taking a loan if not how it is different okay uh, i believe uh, you are not getting the answer so i'll tell it myself it is similar to loan in many aspects in terms of obtaining loan in terms of repayment in terms of interest so on so it is uh, having many features of a loan so i will say features of bond features of bond or debenture it has uh, it is similar to loan or we say it is a debt representing security it represents debt of a company it is similar to loan in many aspects it is similar to loan in many aspects uh, such as uh, the whatever right it's it's a loan I mean it's it's a debt such as it is debt for a company there will be lender and there will be interest payment regularly interest payment and uh, repayment etc it is very similar uh, in all these aspects but it is different from loan in one important feature it is different from loan one important feature 
can you tell me what it is the loan don't have that feature whereas a bond has that feature it is different from the loan that is in in market in marketability or security in marketability what do you mean by marketability this bond can be transferred can be sold there is a market for it whereas in case of loan there is no market loan cannot be sold so this investor can sell it can sell this bond to another person this investor can sell or market sell to another investor or another bond holder another investor so it is a transferable instrument that is the main point so bond is a transferable instrument <coughs> transferable instrument okay so please write down this basics of bond valuation uh, one basic chart and the features of bond and if you have done let me know it then i'll go for some numerical examples <clears throat> uh, is it completed? I have taken it down. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. Next. So, what is the main important aspect here? Here, the spread bond valuation is the marketability. So, we have to understand the market price. How do you value it? So, first topic for us is valuation of bonds. Valuation of bonds. <coughs> okay, now, <coughs> first of all, let me give one basic simple concept. Now, please tell me. If new person want to become an investor in the bond, see company issue the bond, initial investor, he becomes the bond holder. But sometime later, if I want to invest in bond, is it possible or not? What do you think? Company has issued to some investor that is bond holder. But now I want to be the bond holder of that company. So how do I do that? How I can become a bond holder of an existing company who has issued the bonds, let's say, two years back. Can I become the bond holder of that company? Or should I wait for that company to issue next time? <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think uh, the flow is not coming. So, I'm not getting the uh, any uh, feedbacks for any of my questions. So, okay. So, uh, I think uh, you don't want much of interactive sessions. Then I'll make it one way only. 
uh, I can't help. <coughs> Fine. So let me first mute all. Fine. So uh, as I just showed you, now <coughs> company is there, issuer is there, company issue the bond, a person becomes the bond investor. But later if somebody wants to become the holder, then he has to purchase from the market. Keeping that in mind, if let's say issue price or let's say face value only is 1000 and coupon payment is let's say 8% and let's say maturity period is 5 years. Okay. Now, Every year, how much you get? Coupon 8% per annum. So, 8% on 1000, you will get 80 rupees every year. So, many people think that this coupon is your income. Many people think that. Oh, I have invested 1000, I get 8% per annum. So, 80 rupees is my income. That is my income. 80 rupees every year I get. But the answer is not true. Why? Because later point in time, suppose market price has become 1100, just for example purpose, then I still get 80 rupees only, 8% will be on face value, uh, coupon will be not on market price. So if I think from investor point of view, what is my return? My return is not 8%, right? Because uh, 80 rupees on 1100, if you calculate, then it will come to 80 80 by 1100 into 100, you get almost only 7.27 percentage. If you think from investor point of view, his return. And therefore, uh, you cannot say that coupon is the income for the investor or you have to come out from that mindset. That the regular income what I am getting, that is not the true income from the investor point of view. Income is different from cash flow. In other words, the coupon what you take it, you treat like a cash flow and not an income. So, in valuation of bonds, you have to understand the coupon what is paid out regularly is to be treated like a cash flow and not like a income. So, there is a difference between income and cash flow. For example, there is something called a zero coupon bonds. What is zero coupon bond? You invest at 1000 rupees and you don't get any coupon and you may get maturity of 1100 after five years, let's say. So every year you don't get any income. Does it mean this is not providing any income? No. One time you are getting 100 rupees and if spread across five years, uh, 100 by 5, you get 20 rupees per annum. I am just telling you as a concept, right? So you have to come out from that mindset, coupon is treated like a cash flow and don't treat like a income and that is why I am not, we are using the word coupon and not using the word interest. And this what you are discussing now is also going to play a very important role in your FR paper, especially in financial instruments. Anyway, let us come back to this. So valuation of bond is ultimately value of bond value of bond is present value of future 
cash flows. Present value of future cash flows. So what are the future cash flows? Regular cash flows are, you know, year one, year two, year three, dot, 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 dot. Every year what you get is coupon, which will be fixed amount. So coupon for year one, coupon for year two, coupon for year three and so on. Last year, I will say year end. You will get coupon also and last year you get redemption price. And this present value when you calculate the coupon, I told you coupon you treat like a cash flow, the regular cash flow and every coupon you do a present value and last year coupon as well as redemption price, the present value what you get and that is what is value of the bond that is how much you should be ready to pay equals value of the bond and you know since every year coupon is same for coupon discounting i can use an uh, annuity factor and for redemption price discounting i can use discounting factor i can do faster Either, otherwise coupon also i can do it one by one so please write down this the after this, I'm going to write it in a uh, uh, formula format, equation format, and then we'll write in our regular tabulation format. So first write the chart format, representation of present value calculation. And of course, present value, you have to discount by required rate of return. <coughs> And remember, coupon is a percentage calculated on face value only, not on market price. In some charts, I'm getting the answer that 8% should not be applied on 1100. This is always applied on face value, not on market price. Coupon does not change. Coupon remains fixed. It is fixed. This is fixed coupon. We have certain varieties also, which we'll understand as we go further. Okay, I'll go further on this. So if you write it in a formula format or equation format, present value of the bonds, equation format, value of bond is given by the coupon divided by I'll say 1 plus K discounting rate first year discounting rate plus second year discounted coupon divided by 1 plus K whole square I hope you understand what we are doing I'm calculating present value what is the present value formula future value by 1 plus R to the power of N so first year cash flow I'm computing present value, second year coupon, I am computing present value and so on and last year redemption value divided by 1 plus k to the power of n, last year, nth year. Since coupon is same every year, I can write like this, coupon multiplied by annuity factor because every year coupon will be same. And redemption price, redemption value, RV, redemption value multiplied by discounting factor. Uh, if I write in tabulation format, value of the bonds, is, or if, if I write in tabulation format like year, cash flow, discounting factor, discounted value. Year 1 to nth year, every cash flow I get coupon. 
multiplied by discounting factor, I will multiply it by annuity factor. Every year coupon will be same. But sometimes coupon will be different also. In that case, I have to use every year uh, discounting factor separately. And last year, I will get redemption value and we multiply it by the last year discounting factor. Whatever the amount I get, the present value total is the value of bond. So write down this equation format for valuation of bond, uh, tabulation format of valuation of bond. This value people also call it as intrinsic value. Okay, I uh, hope you have taken down, I will go further. Now, the two things you have to understand, one important point that is required rate versus coupon rate. Why these two differs? Required rate of return versus coupon rate. Now, one thing will be there. Practically, who will fix the coupon rate? Do you think company will fix the coupon rate? Or uh, market will fix the coupon rate? Or investor will the fix the coupon rate? Who decides the coupon rate? The coupon rate is actually decided by market factors or it will have impact market factors. Just like FD interest rate, who will decide FD interest rate, sir, bank will decide. Bank will decide FD interest rate, but how does bank will decide? Now, for example, for example, uh, SBI is there, HDFC bank is there, okay? And uh, now in the bar, uh, SBI tells FD rate of let us say 1%. Now, if SBI says 1% FD rates, will you keep the money in SBI? No, right? You go to HDFC bank, you go to Axis bank, you go to Kendra bank. Because they are equivalent banks having similar characteristics, you will invest the FD there. Therefore, it is decided by market factors. Of course, RBI also is going to play a role. RBI will fix a benchmark. We have report rep rep rate, reverse report rate. Many things to learn, but one thing you keep it in mind, uh, coupon rate, it is fixed by company as per the agreement, but it is influenced by market factors. So, I, as we just understood, you will have the investor and you will have the issuer, right, and investor invest money. An issuer will make the payment of coupon and how this coupon will be decided that is the market rate, rate at the time of issue, the rate prevailing in market at the time of issue rate prevailing in the market at the time of issue. That means uh, if I take the fixed deposit now for 5 years, I will get today interest, whatever is running in the market. What is today FD interest? Uh, FD interest is around 5% uh, now, 5.5%, 5% now. But had I taken the fixed deposit 10 years back, at that point in time, what would be the FD rate of interest? It might be even as high as 8%, 9%. I hope you are getting the point. 
the rate of interest is influenced by the prevailing market factors so companies issuing the bonds today in the year 2025 let's say in the year 2025 whatever is the market rate and that will be given so when or, or we can write like this at the time of issue at issue or at the time of issue at the time of issue the coupon rate will be equal to required rate of investor and how investor decides what he requires that's based on market rate at that time market rate at that time i hope you got this point uh, i will be spending little bit more time uh, don't think it is i'm dragging this because practically many people think about stock market but the stock market is important on one important feature called as liquidity and the liquidity is decided by the bond markets the fixed income market the more you understand this the liquidity aspect how the money comes in and goes out and this can influence stock market you can play you can trade you can invest in stock market better if you understand the cycles in fixed income market anyway keep that aside i am only trying to tell one simple point the required rate is from the investor point of view coupon rate is what is provided by the company and that will be equal at the time of issue because how does company decide how does the banker decide what should be the fd rate depends on market rate at that point in time so what will be the coupon rate the company is going to pay is what is required rate of return for the investor and what is required rate of return for the investor that is market rate at that time market rate at that time now later as the time progress as the time progress required rate of return will change why market factors will change 10 years back the position of the economy was different now the position of economy is different 10 years back had you put fd it would have gone for 8 9% now the fd is coming only for 5 6% 5% but will the coupon change what i'm trying to tell let me explain okay suppose on 1 1 2020 company issues bond face value 1000 a uh, coupon rate let's say 8% and number of years let's say 10 years that means what uh, 2030 or uh, 31st december 2019 10 years is the maturity and coupon rate 8% what do you mean by coupon rate 8% as on 11 2020 the market people are expecting 8% from the company initially what do you expect is what i give so on 11 2020 the required rate also will be 8% because that's how they will fix the coupon rate whatever is the expectation of the market that's what i should pay if i don't pay people will not subscribe to me people will not invest me i told an example of sbi if you if sbi don't pay the market rate then we'll go somewhere else okay this is on 11 2020 now let's say 3 years over 3 years over that is uh, on 11 2023 what will happen to the coupon rate coupon rates we do you think it will remain as 8% or it will change coupon rate is like fd rate if you are investing or this instrument is valid for 10 years once the coupon is 
fixed till maturity it does not change we are having that method also that's called as the floating coupon we'll discuss it later but the coupon rate 8% remains fixed remains fixed that does not change but what will happen to the required rate will it remain same or not it will not remain same because the new investor he will compare what alternative i have this instrument might have been issued 10 years back but as a new investor i am looking at the alternatives if i invest in this bond how much i get if i invest in this bond how much i get i mean i have it has to fulfill my expectation the required rate would have changed it will not remain same it would have changed it would have changed and when the required rate changes the because of which you cannot change the coupon you cannot change the uh, redemption price because they are fixed you know value of the bond is coupon and redemption price value of the bond you cannot change uh, coupon uh, uh, redemption price you cannot change i mean uh, coupon you cannot change uh, redemption price you cannot change only what you can change is market price in the sense the value of the bond is what changes and why uh, required rate of return changes it may be because of economy or it might be because of uh, gst happened demortization happened corona happened for which rbi has to change the base interest rates so interest rate level in the economy will change so required rate changed because market factor changed would have changed because of market factors economy level uh, inflation situation rbi policy various things market factors i'll simply put it as market factors would have changed so this is how so how do you calculate the value of the bond uh, let me calculate you can note down this example i'll quickly uh, compute the value of the bond uh, on 11 2020 how the value of the bond is there 3 years later how the bond will change okay uh, i'll just take the same example i'll go further on 1 1 2020 what is the value of the bond how do we calculate value of bond i'll use the simple tabular format year cash flow discounting factor discounted cash flow year 1 2 uh, 10 years 10 years is there and instead of calculating every year one by one uh, i will do annuity factor method because uh, every year cash flow will be same coupon 8% on face value 1000 that is 80 rupees and discounting factor is how much discounting factor is 8% uh, only because coupon rate and discounting rate the required rate of return both are same at the time of issue so what will be the uh, present value how do you calculate 1 divided by 1.08 press equal to 10 times and then press gt or you can press equal to m plus every time
6.7101. I'll take four decimal usually. 6.7101. 80 into 6.7101. 536.81. And last year, you get the uh, redemption value. When nothing is given, the face value itself is redemption value, which is 1000 rupees. Face value itself is redemption value when uh, nothing is specified. Redem it is redeemable at par. When nothing is given, redeemable at par. And last year, don't take anti factor. Last year, only one cash flow. So, discounting factor last year. Point four six three two. Yeah, point four six three two. So multiply, we get four sixty three point two. By thirty six point eight plus four sixty three point two, you get thousands. So value of the bond is thousand. Okay, this is at the time of issue. Now on one one two thousand twenty three, in the sense uh, three years later, value of the bonds. Suppose at that point in time, required rate of return has become. Let's say six uh, percent. You see, you understand uh, what is happening now because of various market factors: Corona, GST, demonetization, RBI policy. Rate of interest has fallen, so required rate of people is also now less, only six percent. So, what will be the value of the bond then? Year cash flow discounting factor at what rate? What is the required rate? Now the required rate is 6%. So discounting factor is at 6%. And let's calculate discounted cash flow. And year 1, 2, how many years? Can you tell me? Previously we have taken year 1 to 10. And here how many years I have to take? Okay. In financial management, I told you it's always about decision making. It's always about future. So you should look at how many remaining cash flows are there. What was the original life? Original life was 10 years. Out of 10 years, 3 years over. Don't look at what happened in the past. Look at what is going to happen in the future. In the sense, it is remaining years to maturity. So we should select 7 years, 3 years over remaining maturity, remaining years, 7 years. Cash flow will be remaining same, okay. This 80 will be fixed. That will not change. So discounting factor at 6%. Recalculate. Discounting factor at 6% for a period of 7 years. So 1 by 1.06 equals, equals, equals 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I think you get 5.5824. Of course, you press GT at the end. And last year, seventh year, you get redemption value only thousands. And that redemption value will be 1 by 1.06 equal to 7 times, no GT, 0 0.6651. 80 into 5.5824, 446.59. 1000 into 0.6651. 665.1 so total 
111.69 value of the bond so thousands has become 1111.69 okay if it is let's say on the same date 1 1 2023 Suppose required rates is not 6%, suppose it has become 10%. Uh, that is uh, rate of return not increased but in uh, decreased but not increased. 8% was original rate, then 6% reduces. That is what we have done. Uh, why don't you do another situation? What if it increases? 8% becomes 10%. In that situation, what would you analyze? In the sense, what would be the value of the bond? Let's recalculate quickly. Year cash flow discounting factor at the rate of 10% discounted cash flow. Year 1 to 7, year 7. Cash flow 80, 1000 and discounting factor 10%, 1 by 1.1 plus equals to 7 times GT. Four point eight six eight four. 4 I think. 4.8684. And last discounting factor 0 0.5132. So this is uh, 5.13.2. So total. Three eighty nine point four seven plus five thirteen point two nine zero two point six seven. This is value of the bond. So ultimate concept of value of the bond, any valuation in financial management is present value of future cash flows. And here the future cash flows are coupon and redemption price. And when you discount using your required rate, expected rate, that's how you get value of the bond. Okay, <clears throat> hope you understood now. One thing you please observe. When 8% became 6%, when the discounting rate reduced, what happened to the market price? 1000 became 1011.69. When the discount rate reduced, market price increased. And when 8% became 10%, when the discounting rate increased, what happened to the market price? The thousand became nine 
0.02 market price reduced remember i told you inverse relationship the market price uh, when the discounting rate reduces the present value increase when the discounting rate increase the present value reduce and more importantly you can understand this in one more manner if your uh, coupon rate and required rate both are equal then present value will be equal to face value if your uh, uh, required rate is less then the present value will be more if required rate is more the present value will be less let's try to do these observations first of all uh, the value of the bond and required rate inversely related correct inversely related inversely related i am not writing in sentences hope you understand inversely related one increase other decrease then if required rates is equal to coupon rate then it implies your value of the bond will be equal to face value because uh, redeemable at par that's why as otherwise that should redeemable value is equal to face value if required rate is more than coupon rate if required rate is more than coupon rate then value of the bond will be lesser than face value value of the bond will be less than face value okay now let me tell you the logic behind this then uh, i'll write other situation when required rate is more why value of the bond will be less it, it happened in last situation right it became 10% okay now back to basics keep it simple think from investor point of view what is my cash inflow and what is my cash outflow investor point of view my cash inflow is coupon and my cash inflow is redemption price yes coupon redemption price which is fixed cannot change and my cash outflow is value of the bond the price at which i am going to purchase you can say market price the value of the bond market price i am going to pay are you understanding two cash inflow coupon is my cash inflow redemption price is my inflow my outflow is market price the investment value that is my outflow now let's say coupon rate is in this case uh, 8% and my required rate of return is 10% i need 2% extra 8% which i want i will get in coupon which is i am getting 8% but i want 10% and i want 2% extra and where i am going for the 2% extra i cannot change coupon fix it i cannot change uh, uh, redemption value fixed but i want the 2% extra where will i go when i am making a payment i make less payment are you getting my point or can i tell you like this if you think from investor point of view there are two types of profit or in income tax angle there are two kinds of heads of income for the bond holder i have one coupon which is my income from other source and i have one more what is that income from capital gains 
the difference between my investment price and my redemption price my buy price my sale price my buy price is the investment price sale price is the redemption price i have coupon as one profit right coupon as one income another income is my capital gain redeemable value minus market price the value of the bond now coupon i cannot change it now only way for me to achieve the 2% extra i want extra income how do i make that extra income by paying less by getting more capital gain i'll repeat once more in this example you require 10% rate of return but the company is providing only 8% 8% you are getting in the form of coupon but you need extra 2% which you will achieve by capital gains by paying less that is what is market price so why value of bond is less than face value because you can write down the excess return the excess return what is excess return required rate minus coupon rate the excess return is achieved by paying less reducing your cost basically i want more profit reduce my cost so excess return is achieved by paying less excess return is achieved by paying less by paying less okay another case required rate is less than coupon rate reverse opposite in that case what happens value of the bond is more than face value value of the bond is more than face value and why uh, because uh, they are offering 8% but you want only 6% you don't want that extra to that extra to what you don't want will increase your cost so opposite of the previous one so you understand one that is sufficient so when required rate of return is less than coupon rate value of the bond will be more than face value or in other words the excess return which you don't want it will be taken away or you are end up in paying extra price and thereby you achieve your required rate okay one more thing you observe one more thing you observe 8% mean 8% became 6% 2% change and for 2% change 1000 became 1111 so 111 rupees increase 111 but 8% became 10% 2% change but 1000 rupee becoming 902 not 111 it's some uh, 98 998 you understand right 2% upside and 2% downside the moments are not equal we say the relationship is not linear it is curvy linear just keep it in mind i'll discuss little bit later but just observation just keep it in mind 2% upside the change is not equal to 2% downside now 8% became 6% 2% downside what is the change in the value 1000 became 1011 111 
8% became 10%, 2% increased, but the value 1000 became 902, that is 998. So 2% upside change is not equal to 2% downside change. We say the relationship is inverse, but not linear. It is not equal. It is <coughs> curvy linear. Anyway, we will discuss little later. Okay. Now, next question is, uh, what factors influence required rate? What factors influence required rate? Or uh, why required rate changes? Why required rate changes? Two in important points or I will say one is called as interest rate risk, other is called as uh, default risk or credit risk, credit risk or also called as default risk. Okay, what is interest rate risk? That is uh, uh, interest rate in the economy. Interest rate in economy. And what is credit risk? That is credit worthiness of the issuer. Credit worthiness of issuer. Okay, let me spend one or two minutes on this. Okay. Uh, as I told you earlier, if State Bank of India offers only 1%, HDFC Bank offers 5%, Axis Bank offers 5%, Kendra Bank offers 5%, obviously you go to other bank, you don't go to SBI. So, interest rate movements are what is interested in the economy. That's one thing. Second thing, now if some cooperative bank, some uh, NBFCs, uh, Manapuram Finance, Muthut Finance, uh, they offer even 10%, uh, 12% interest rates versus HDFC Bank or versus SBI. Now, would you go for the cooperative banks because they will give you more rate of interest? Or what is the reason why they are offering more rate of interest? Because they carry more risk. So why people are always favorable to FD in bank? Because it is safe. But whereas you can also put FD in NBFCs, Manapuram Finance, Muttu, Bajaj Finance, you can also put FD in uh, 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 cooperative banks, some Vishweshwaraya cooperative banks, some cooperative banks, where rate of interest is also high, but risk is also high. That is what is credit worthiness of the issuer. And who will decide the credit worthiness of the issuer in? Uh, bond market, this concept of identifying credit worthiness of the issuer is called as credit rating. Because when company goes large scale, so many investors will be there. Investors are not exposed to understand credit worthiness of the company. So they need to go through agency for rating them. For example, we have most famous agency, Crisil. We have ICRA, ICRA, then CARE, Fitch, Modi, so many ratings are there, Modi ratings. So when the rating is high, AAA, that means it is safest, rate of interest will be lowest. If AA, little bit less uh, category means more risk, more return. Single A, B, triple B, C, in the sense, higher the ratings, lower the risk. In the sense, higher risk, higher return. So, these are the two main factors which influence required rate. Okay. Now, it's also a perception of risk. 
right this is also percep perception of risk in the sense uh, one person might feel it is little bit riskier other person might may feel it is little bit more riskier but ultimately everything should get reflected in the market price okay uh, i hope you have taken down till here now i'll come to that perception i'll come to that market price uh now little bit later but uh, hope you have written down till here okay fine i'll go further now one more question is uh, will <coughs> value of the bond be equal to market price always will value of the bond is equal to market price the answer is yes it will be equal if required rate is equal to the uh, what a market rate what everybody says what required rate and what expect what is given by market that is uh, if required rate is same as what everybody expects if required rate is same for all same for all all means market participant no if required rate is different for investors let's say investors if required rate is same for all investor then value of the bond is equal to market price it is not equal when required rate is different for investors now in the examination if nothing is given yes if we assume it is equal practically what do you think will happen everybody will have same required rate is it no everybody's perception will be different everybody's situation will be different everybody's liquidity position will be different somebody requiring more money somebody requiring uh, some projects happening somebody requiring surplus money so this is more likely to happen practically required rate of return is different for investors so value of the bond may not be equal to market price now how do we decide whether to invest in the bond that is very simple if the value is more than the price value is what we get right value is more we will invest in the bond if value is less we say don't have to invest in the bond okay now <clears throat> suppose let me take a numerical example uh let's say face value of the bond or i'll write in the first slide face value is let's say 1000 coupon let's keep it simple let's say 10% remaining time to maturity i don't want how many as it is uh, invested back remaining time to maturity remaining time to maturity <coughs> let's say 5 years
Okay, and I'm giving you market price is let's say uh, nine fifty rupees. Are you getting the point? We are having five years, so year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. And coupon, 10% means what I get? 100 rupees every year, 100 rupees and 1000. Every year I get 100 rupees. And last year I get a redemption value, 1000. And when I discount this, When I discount this, what is it called as? When you compute the present value of future cash flows, uh, it is called as value of the bond, intrinsic value of the bonds. But when you calculate using the discount rate, required rate of return, that is value of the bond. But I am not doing value of the bond. Uh, what I am doing? What I am doing is market price. It should be equal to market price. What is the discounting rate I am calculating now? Are you getting the point? In the earlier illustrations what I did, I have gave you the required rate of return. We have computed the present value. Now I am giving you the present value should be 950. What should be the discounting rate? That is what Remember, what is it called as in our basics chapter? Using the required rate of return, I can calculate the present value. But using the present value, if I calculate the rate of return, then that is called as IRR, right? And here, it is called as yield to maturity, YTM, yield to maturity, YTM, this discounting rates at which you get the present value that is called as YTM. The discounting rate at which the present value will be equal to market price is called as YTM, yield to maturity. Okay, so let me write the meaning, then I'll go for calculation. Y T M yield to maturity. Yield to maturity. Y T M. So basically, this is the yield or return provided. by the bond for the investor if held till maturity. Of course, if you sell in between, market price will be something else. Your uh, actual yield also will be different. But this is the return provided by the bond for the investor if held till maturity. You see, everybody's required rate of return changes, but we are not calculating the value of the bond from investor point of view. This is from instrument point of view. Let me write it. In other words, this is the rate or discounting rate at which present value of coupon and redemption value is equal to market price. What do you mean by that? Let me write it. So you have coupon, I mean you have year 1, year 2, year 3 and last year, year n. You have coupon, I'll just say C, hope you understand, C for coupon, 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 redemption value, when I discount it, yield 
using required rate of return. If I discount it using required rates, the present value what I get is value of the bond. differs from person to person, right? Everybody's uh, required rate can change. Whereas, if I discount year 1, year 2, year 3, dot dot dot, year n, coupon, 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 redemption value, discount it, discounted using YTM. When what will I get it? I get present value as market price. Now, this is same for all, right? Market price, same for all, same for all investor. Whereas value of the bond is different subjective that's what we discussed basics also price is market price same for everybody but value of the bond differs from person to person basis everybody's required rate of changes everybody's value of the bond changes but market price same for everybody so ytm same for everybody other words value of the bond is from investor point of view whereas market price and ytm is from instrument point of view irr value of the bond is investor point of view whereas market price or ytm is instrument point of view market price and ytm is from instrument point of view Okay, so how do we calculate this YTM? There are two methods. Uh, one is uh, approximate formula, other is IRR method. That is, you know, one you assume one higher rate, one lower rate, in between that you try to calculate interpolation method, that is one more method. Let's calculate that. So basically, YTM, I repeat myself, it is from instrument point of view or bond point of view. We have two formulas, uh, methods. One is approximate method. The other one, IRR method or interpolation method. Okay, so we'll write this formula. Uh, before that, let's take a break. Uh, uh, 7.40 now. Uh, let's take a break of uh, 10 minutes and let's meet at 7.50. Uh, take a break of 10 minutes. Take a break of 10 minutes.
okay uh, so now we are understanding about ytm yield to maturity basically we are finding the discounting rate from the instrument point of view based on market price so we have two formulas approximate method is easy IR method more accurate but in the examination if they just ask you ytm you can use any of the methods so approximation method means the formula is numerator is like a return denominator is like a investment numerator is coupon there is a return and then redemption value minus market pr price rv redemption value minus market price divided by n remaining time to maturity whole divided by average investment redeemable value plus market price divided by 2 numerator is like return denominator is like average investment IRR method it is lower percentage plus difference in percentage you need two different percentages one higher percentage one lower percentage so difference in percentage divided by difference in present value multiplied by I need a little more space hope I can write it the present value at lower percentage minus market price investment the IRR method what you have learned in the basics and your know, decision if IRR is more than required rate of return that bond is recommended to be invested Okay, now let me quickly apply for this problem. Uh, this illustration I given 1010%. Okay, now think logically uh, for this illustration. What is my regular income? My regular income every year is 100 rupees, and additionally, I am investing 950, I am getting thousands. So what is my extra return? Extra return is 50 rupees. Capital gain, uh, investment 950, redemption 1000. Buy price 950, the sale value 1000. But that will not come every year. That will come only once. So if I have to calculate YTM for this problem using approximation method, what is the coupon? The coupon I get every year. 100 rupees 1000 into 10 percent then redemption value 1000 rupees minus market price 950 rupees capital gain 50 rupees but this 50 rupees i get only once so i'll spread across remaining life divided by five like a depreciation i amortize my income also i distribute divided by average investment that is thousands plus 900 divided by 2. You can multiply by 100 to express in percentage. So how much it comes to? So 1000 minus 950 divided by 5. 10 plus 100 divided by 950. Point 0.1157 or you can multiply it by 100. Eleven point five seven eight, eleven point five eight percent, eleven point five eight percent. Okay, now let's calculate YTM using interpolation method. Okay, for interpolation, I need two percentages. 
Now, one percentage already know it. What is that? Uh, please tell me if my coupon rate is 10 percent and my discounting rate is also 10 percent, what will happen to the present value? I hope you know it. When my discounting rate and coupon rate both are equal, my required rate of return, coupon rate both are equal. I can calculate, but you know it. Uh, when that happens, that uh, present value will be equal to face value. So that you know it. So if my discounting rate is 10%, then my present value is equal to face value 1000 rupees concept. Or you can assume some other rate. As you make 8%, you can calculate. Now, I want the present value to be market price. What is the market price? That is 950. What is the percentage I require? Now, please tell me, my present value, 1000 should become 950. Present value should reduce. Now, present value should reduce means what should happen to the discounting rate? Inversely related, remember, if the present value should reduce, the rate of interest should increase. Inversely related. So, I should select, let's say, 12%. Assumed. A higher rate. So, at 12%, calculate the present value. You know the formats. Uh, present value is calculated by the coupon into annuity factor plus um, I can write in an equation format also plus the redemption value multiplied by discounting factor. I am not writing in a tabular format. Hope you understand how to calculate this quickly. Coupon that is uh, 100. Annuity factor, 1 by 12% I am calculating, 1 by 1.12, press equal to 5 times GT, how much is annuity factor? 10% for 5 years, 3.7908, 1 by 1.1 equal to 5 times GT, 3.7908. Hope you are getting this GT calculation. Plus redemption value, redeemable par 1000 into discounting factor. Again, last year discounting factor 10% for 5 years, 0 0.6209. So, this present value, and I can do in tabular format. I am writing it in an equation. Hope you understand. This is 379.08 plus 620.9. Oh, sorry, I should have taken 12%. 12% uh, what is the discounting rate I get? Not this one, sorry. 12% uh, I get 3.6048. 3.6048. 1 by 1.12 press equal to 5 times GT. 3.6048. And this is uh, 0 0.4019. 12%, sorry, uh, 0.5674. So this is uh, 360.48 plus 567.4, 928. It is uh, 927.88 interpolation method. You can assume one more rate also. You can assume length in like 8% uh, and calculate. Between that, you try to do it. Anyway, we got two percentages. Uh, we got two percent value. <coughs> and remember, uh, this will happen. That is when uh, discounting rate is equal, that is uh, coupon rate will be uh, present value equal to face value will happen when redeemable at par. If not redeemable at par, you have to recalculate for 10% also. Please calculate it. I repeat, when the coupon rate is equal to the 
required rate or YTM present value is equal to the face value. When, when will it happen? Only when redeemable at par. If not redeemable at par, like the way you calculated this present value for 10% also you recalculate. Here also you can calculate. I know it will come to 1000 only. So we are not doing it. So we got two percentages. Uh, we got two values and let's try to interpolate. So YTM, the IRR method, lower percentage, 10 percentage plus difference in percentage, 12 minus 10 by difference in present value, uh, 1000 minus 927.88. Into the present value at lower value 1000 minus market price 950. So 10 plus 2 into 50 divided by 1000 minus 927.88, 72.12. One point three eight, one point three nine. So eleven point three nine. You can see here we got eleven point three nine percent, and here we got eleven point five eight percent. Very close, but uh, IRR or YTM is more accurate. Approximately eleven point two eight you get, is it? Hundred plus ten divided by nine fifty into hundred. Eleven point five eight only, no? Oh, I took nine hundred. Sorry, sorry. I took nine hundred. It should be nine fifty. My mistake. Oh, it should be nine fifty. Okay. So hundred plus ten. Divide by 975 into 100. You get 11.28 percentage. Yes, my mistake. Please correct it. 11.28 percentage. 11.28. Here you get 11.39. You can see that there is a difference, but uh, interpolation method is more accurate. But in the exam, if they are not asked particular method, you can use any method. So please correct it. Uh, I was I had done one arithmetical error. Please correct it. 11.28. I had taken 900 here. This is 950. And here get 11.39. So, uh, we have discussed so far value of the bond, present value of coupon and present value redemption price, discounting rate, required rate of return. Then YTM, using the present value, using the market price, we are calculating the discounting rate. So when the discounting rate is the uh, required rate of return, the present value is value of the bond. When the discounting rate is YTM, the present value is market price. In general, we assume when nothing is specified in the problem, value of the bond equal to market price, YTM equal to required rate of return. When nothing is specified in the problem. But if they have given market price separately, and then we are going to calculate YTM separately. And also keep it in mind, it is YTM, yield tail maturity. This is the return obtained by the investor, assuming he invests till the end. And even the intermediate cash flows are assumed to be reinvested. If it is reinvested elsewhere, it's called as realized YTM. There's one more concept. We'll come to it later. But this is the important concept, value of the bond and YTM. These are the two important concepts. I hope it is fine. Okay, next. <laughs> Thank you.
Two more concepts I will just like to quickly uh, discuss, then I will go further. That is called as uh, duration volatility and convexity but duration volatility concept is more important i'll quickly touch upon what is uh, convexity also first let me talk about duration when you invest in a bond having let's say 3 years maturity you invest today First year you get cash flow, a coupon. Second year you get coupon. Third year you get coupon also and you get redemption price. Now if I ask you, I am making investment today, when I am getting it back? In the sense, uh, when the cash flow is returned to you, what is your holding period? Sir, holding period is 3 years. No. First year also you get one portion, second year also you get one portion, third year also you get one portion. So you are getting three cash flows, you are getting three times. So when multiple cash flow exists, how do you convert uh, the multiple values into single number? Statistically what is it called? When many marks you have, how do we convert into one single mark? We are going to take an average. Similarly, here also we are going to do a average holding period. That's called as duration. So duration is given by average holding period. Duration is given by average holding period period because you know uh, one uh, I mean you will having different maturity periods I mean first year you get coupon second year you get coupon last year you get coupon redemption price average holding period formula wise we do like this one column you know you will have year other column you know you will have cash flows then discounting factor at the rate of YTM not required rate because for everybody the discounting rate changes because of required rate but we don't want it to change we want the rate to be same for everybody based on market price which is ytm so discounting factor at ytm okay and then i'm going to calculate discounted cash flow that is a cash flow into discounting factor okay now here comes one important point when I calculate average, I'm not going to calculate a simple average. I'm going to calculate a weighted average. Why weighted average? Because first year amount what I get is not same as second year amount what I get. Because first year coupon I get, second year coupon I get. But the value of first year coupon, the present value, the value of second year coupon changes and uh, in fact, last year redemption price amount itself is changed. So, when I do a average, I don't do simple average of the time periods. I'm going to do a weighted average. And in weighted average, we need two columns, one X column and one W column. So, what is the X column? What is the W column here? Many people tell me, sir, year is weights column. No, year is not weight column. Year is X column. This year is X column. Why? Because when I calculate average marks, marks is X. If I calculate average speed, the speed is X. If I calculate average salary, salary is X. Similarly, I am calculating average holding period. So, my holding period is X and holding period is year. That is X. And the weights is my amount and to be specific, present value. So, my discounted cash flow is W weight. And if I multiply both X into W, I do the product that is summation XW and I do this weights total this summation w 
So weighted average x bar or duration is given by summation x w divided by summation w. That is basically the product column divided by present value column weights column. Now, but can you tell me, can you imagine what is this DCF will be? This DCF column, discount cash flow column is present value column. And we are calculating present value of coupons and discounted YTM. When I use discounting rate, what will be my present value? My present value is nothing but market price of the bonds. Why market price of the bond? When the discounting rate is YTM, when discounting at YTM, discounting factor is YTM, the present value should be market price. That's how we would have calculated the implicit rate, inter IR rate of YTM. So when I discount YTM, my present value should be market price. This is about duration, uh, average, uh, holding periods. One more shortcut formula is also there. But let's understand this. Uh, institute does in one more method. They convert this uh, weight into proportion. The DCF divided by total, DCF by total, you get on proportion column, P column, proportion. That they multiplied by year, you get the same answer in the column total. That is also you can present, but that will end up in one more extra column. So I am avoiding it. Anyway, so you can write down this duration part. Okay, I'll go further next. So this is about duration, hope you understood duration. Uh, application problem, there is also something like uh, uh, bond immunization and all concept. We will use the duration part, uh, we'll take up in the problem, uh, then you understand. Okay, then I'll come to next concept, volatility. Okay. Now, what is volatility? Means response, sensitivity, different ways. Between what? So, if you compare value of the bond or market price of the bond is influenced by what variable? Is influenced by coupon and last year you will have redemption price. And you are going to discount it. And what is the discounting rate? Discounting rate is YTM. Right? If discounting rate is required rate, then you get value of the bond. When discounting rate is YTM, I get market price. Now, coupon will it change? Now, coupon don't change in regular bonds. Coupon is a fixed. The redemption price, that also will not change. This also is fixed. Then only thing what is variable changes with respect to market movements is YTM. It fluctuates, varies, variable. So the only reason why the market price of the bond changes is because of YTM. So what connects between the two, between the market price and YTM and that is called as volatility. So if I represent in the graph as let's say in y axis and x axis let's say YTM in x axis let's say price market price of the bond and if you draw the graph it will be downward graph because you know it is inversely relation it will be downward but it will not be a straight line 
Why it's not a straight line? Because I told you 2% upside, 2% downside, the, the moments are not equal. So it is not linear relationship, it is curvy linear relationship. So as the YTM increases, market price reduce, but not in a linear manner, but in a uh, non-linear manner, in a curvy linear manner. It is uh, the moment sensitivity. <clears throat> but how do you calculate the curvy linear relationship is not so easy. For which uh, we have gone for volatility is actually a measure of linear relationship. So we can say volatility is a measure of linear relationship between the price, market price and yield, YTM. So you draw linear relationship. That means you draw a straight line. I mean, uh, I'm not sure whether I can draw. My hands are shivering. But please draw a straight line. Don't draw like this. Okay. Don't think. This line is what is volatility is all about, measure of linear relationship. But why are we writing linear? Isn't that linear and nonlinear different? Don't worry. If I draw line like this, you understand it is a curve. I mean, it's a nonlinear. If I draw like this, it's a linear, big one. But if I write small one, suppose this one, does it look like linear or does it look like nonlinear? When it's the moment is small, you don't really worry about whether linear or non-linear. So when the moment is small, both relationship coincide. You can see here from point A to point B, if I look at the moment is small, the linear non-linear is very close. But if I look at point A to point C, the linear is different, non-linear is different. The line curve, there is a gap. So we just say that. When moment is small, when moment is small, both linear and non-linear gives approximately same answer, gives approximate say, or approximate, you can say both linear and non-linear are approximate. And formula duration is given by sorry volatility is given by duration divided by one plus YTM simple formula duration by one plus YTM So if I tell you volatility is suppose 3, what does it mean? If YTM changes by 1%, the market price changes by 3%. The price and volatility, you see what connects between the bond and YTM. It's a measure of linear relationship between price and yield. So if yield changes by 1%, the market price likely to change by 3% approximately, not accurately because this is measure of linear relationship is also called as uh, first derivative because if you treat like equation differentiation you may not know it but it's also called as first derivative if you treat in a differentiation this volatility is also called as first derivative so volatility is duration by 1 plus ytm so higher the volatility, higher the sensitivity. If volatility is high, that means the bond moves faster. Because if volatility is 3, 1% change, 3% movement in the price. If volatility is 2, 1% change, 2% in the market price. So basically, higher volatility means higher movement, higher risk. Of course, related to interest rate.
Okay, now, but this is only when the moment is small. But we want to remove that effect also. I don't want that small moment also. I want accurate answer. So I want to bridge this gap between linear and non-linear uh, adjustment. If you want to bridge the gap, that is called as convexity. I just try to give you the context once more because I don't know. Uh, some of you might be feeling slightly this is going out of the context. So let me try to bring it everything into the place. Start fresh. Valuation of bond. Present value of future cash flows. Coupons, redemption price, discounting rate, present value, value of the bond. If my discount it at YTM, my present value becomes market price. So the market price is same for everybody. That is what YTM is same for everybody from instrument point of view. And there is inverse relationship between the YTM and the price. YTM is the discounting rate, uh, price is the present value. So inverse relationship. How to measure that relationship? If YTM changes by one percentage, how much market price changes? That is what is volatility. The relationship between YTM yield and price market price. Actually, the relationship is curve. But when I calculate volatility, it's actually a line. Linear relationship. But interest rate movements are very small. So we really don't care. Approximately, line and curve are same when the movement is small. But I don't want to get that uh, approximate answer. I want to be even more accurate answer. I want to bridge the gap between the curve and linear. Then I get concept called as convexity. Convexity. So it is a measure of uh, it's a second derivative. It is changing the linear relationship. It is a second derivative. It is changing the change. So it is a measure of non-linear relationship. So we can say it is a second derivative. Second derivative in the function. Okay, so one formula looks like complicated, but let us write it. Convexity is a price if YTM increase, then plus price is YTM decrease minus two times the market price divided by two times the market price into change in YTM. We say delta YTM. Delta means change. Change in YTM square. So price if YTM increase, price if YTM decrease, minus 2 times market price divided by 2 into market price into change in YTM square is convexity. And uh, if you want to adjust the linear to non-linear, we call it as convexity adjustment. Convexity adjustment. That is, if you want to adjust the linear to non-linear, that is C into delta YTM. Delta means change. How much? 1% or 2% like that. 
change in ytm square anyway you write down later uh, we can look at its detail but basically it is a measure of non relationship that try to understand if you remember differentiation i don't know whether you know it dy by dx is second derivative is first derivative uh, d square y by dx square that's called a second derivative so convexity is the second derivative anyway we can do faster we can use the columnar format also uh, let me see that if i can give you the columnar format faster So, if uh, remember what column we used to do in uh, uh, the dur duration calculation, we used to have year that I used to call it as x column, then uh, cash flow, discounting factor at ytm, then we used to have discounted cash flow that I used to do as w, and then we used to do x into w. Remember, I discussed for duration. Now, what do you do? For uh, convexity, you have one extra column that is uh, you do x into w instead of x into w, you have one more column, you make it as uh, x into w you do, but you multiply it by x plus 1. That is, if, I, if here is 1, you multiply it by 2, like that. That column total you do. Using that also, we can get the convexity. So, I'll just tell you from this column, how can you get convexity is C is summation xw into x plus 1. That's what this column total means. That column only will give you the total. Uh, divide by summation w, that you do anyway, into 1 plus ytm whole square into 1 by 2. So, this will give you the convexity formula if you want to do using the columnar method so that this big calculations you need not do it anyway uh, convexity in the exam they have asked uh, about only once in last many years so i don't say it's very important but just keep it in mind it's a mechanical calculation so uh, what and all we have discussed so far value of the bond that is intrinsic value of the bond, YTM calculation, duration, volatility, convexity. Couple of more concepts are there. I would like to cover everything at one shot. Then I can take up problems, uh, whichever is relevant one. I can take one after another, uh, relevant from exam point of view. So when I take up the problem, these things will be repetition. I understand at the beginning, uh, these things will feel like too heavy for you. So it would be beneficial if problem is there. That's good. But let's follow the process. Let me give you the overview. Then we take down one by one. Okay, so then I'll go for the next concept. Hope you have taken down this one.
Okay. So next concept we have is uh, yield curve. Okay, yield curve. What is yield curve? Uh, you would have seen in fixed deposits uh, when you a deposit. If you deposit for uh, six months, you get let's say four uh, percent. If you deposit for twelve months, you get six percent. You deposit for one year, you get six point five percent. If you deposit for more than three year, uh, you get seven percent flat. Example, right? As everything is percentage per annum basis, as the maturity increase, your uh, rate of return also increase. That's called as yield curve. So yield curve. On one side, you express maturity. On other side, you express yield. YTM, you can see. No, and the curve will look like this. As the maturity period increases, you also start getting higher rate. For example, if it is one year, let's say you get six percent. If you deposit for two year, let's say you get seven percent. If you deposit for three year and above, let's say you get eight percent. But one thing you observe. Uh, first one year you deposit, you get seven percent. If you deposit for two years, you get uh, one year you deposit, you get six percent. Two year you deposit, you get seven percent. Now you please tell me, for extra one year, am I getting only one percent extra? What do you think? If I deposit for one year, I get six percent. If I deposit for two years, I get seven percent. Does it mean for extra one year I get only one percent extra? No. Where we are going wrong? This is six percent per annum. This is seven percent per annum. So it's actually this is six percent for one year. For two years, I'm getting fourteen percent. So my incremental return is eight percent. Are you understanding? When I deposit for one year, I get six percent. When I deposit for two years, I get seven percent. For both the years, I get seven percent. Actually, totally, I get fourteen percent. So what is my incremental return? Incremental return. For increasing the period is eight percent extra return for second year indirectly I'm getting eight percent, right? That is called as forward rate. So the seven percent per annum is called as YTM for second year because it is applicable YTM. You get seven percent for first year as well as second year. Whereas eight percent you get only for second year and that is called as Forward rate for second year. So what is YTM? YTM is yield for certain number of years, whereas forward rate is the rate of interest applicable for a particular year on an incremental basis. So YTM is the yield for certain number of years. Whereas forward rate is the return, FR forward rate, not your financial reporting. FR forward rate is the return for a particular year. So yield curve. As the maturity increase, your average yield increases. You can say yield curve is like an average. Whereas forward rate is the rate applicable for a particular year on an incremental basis. On a incremental basis. <laughs>
Okay, so hope you uh, got this. Okay, let me give formula now. So if I want to go from zero to let's say third year, if I want to do using YTM, how do I calculate present value? Or directly using third year, I mean year zero to year three. If I want to calculate, I'll do just one plus a um, multiplication model. Okay, one plus YTM of year three whole cube. That is one straight method that is using yield using YTM. But if I want to go using forward rate, what do I do? I'll do like this uh, one plus forward rate of year one. I moved to year one. One plus forward rate of year two. I moved to year two. One plus forward rate of year three. I moved to year three. So one year at a time. Every year forward rate can change. One year at a time is forward rate. For all the three years put together is YTM of year three. So in general we can write like this: one plus forward rate of year one is equal to one plus YTM of year one. Why I am writing every time one plus one plus? We follow multiplicative model. Every time I move from year one to year two, I don't do year one plus year two. Multiplicative model. Year one plus F R one, then one plus R two. I do one year at a time. So only first year forward rate is one year YTM. Or in other words, you can say forward rate of year one is YTM of year one. If I increase by one more year, one plus forward rate of first year into one plus forward rate of second year. So one year, one year. I move to second year. So I can use one plus YTM of second year whole square. Second year YTM based on first year and second year. You can say average rate based on first and second. Third year means one plus FR one, one plus FR two, and one plus FR three. Three year. So together I can write one plus YTM of year three whole cube. If I write four years, one plus F R one first year, one plus F R two second year, one plus F R three third year, one plus F R four fourth year. Then what I can write? Four years are there, so four year Y T M I can directly write one plus Y T M of year four all to the power of four. So this is what is the yield curve Y T M. And the forward rates is all about. You can make a note of this. Okay. <clears throat> Next concept: convertible bonds. You know, bonds are fixed income securities, but that can be converted into shares. Typically, it's required from a business point of view. Some uh, practically, because as an investor. you know initially company makes losses so i don't want to take that loss i want a fixed interest i want to be bond holder 
But once company starts making money, I want to be equity shareholders because I can get a share of profits. Because bond means fixed income, but equity share means I can get more in the money. That's why we go with this concept of convertible bonds. So when they give you this convertible bonds, certain measures they'll ask you to calculate. Like you have conversion value or equity value. Conversion value means if you convert the bonds into equity share today, what will be the value? That is, uh, you say, uh, whatever is the market price of equity share, I'll say MPS into conversion ratio. For example, if uh, bond price face value is uh, thousands and they'll tell you, uh, you get the ratio of 1 is to 20, that is or 20 is to 1. For every one bond you have, you get 20 equity shares, conversion ratio, 20 shares for every one bond you have, convertible, 20 is to 1. And let's say market price of equity share is, let's say, uh, 12 rupees. So then how do you calculate if you convert the uh, value, this Two less no twenty to twelve. Okay, uh, let's say forty five rupees market price. Let's say forty five rupees. So forty five rupees into twenty nine hundred rupees. That is conversion value. So what is conversion value? If the bonds are converted into the shares today, that's called as conversion value, market price into conversion ratio. <clears throat> okay. Now, if market price of bond, convertible bond, let's say if it happens to be uh, 920 rupees in this case. Now, what is conversion value? 45 into 20, uh, you get uh, 45 market price, 20 is the ratio, it is 900. So, if you remain in uh, bond, market value of the bond is 920. If you convert into shares, it becomes 900. Do you think you will convert or you don't convert? Obviously, you don't, right? It's better you be in the bond because value is high than you convert it into shares where it becomes less 900 rupees. Okay. Now, how much extra is there to be in the bond? That's called as a conversion premium conversion premium per bond that is convert uh, what our market price of convertible bond market price of convertible bond minus market price of i mean uh, minus conversion value if you convert what will be the value minus conversion value like in this example, uh, market price of convertible bond is uh, uh, 920 minus conversion value. It is if you convert 900. So what is the extra amount that enjoy or you are enjoying by being in bonds? That is 20 rupees. That's called as conversion premium per bond. Uh, you can divide by conversion ratio. You get per share. Or you can divide by the market price of the bond. You can express in percentage. I mean, divide by conversion value different different form but premium means extra amount that you are having for being in bonds conversion premium per bond <coughs> then one more we have is called as parity price okay now what is parity price now please tell me at this point of time is it better to convert into shares or be in the bond we just now discussed, uh, if you are in the bond, value is 920. But if you make it into shares, the value is 900. 
it's better you be in the bond now if market price 45 if it becomes uh, let's say uh, 47 rupees if it becomes 47 rupees then what will you do is it better to convert into shares 47 into 20 shares you get 940 right 47 into 20 you get 940 which is more than 920 so you have a better value by going into the equity shares so at 45 it's not good but if the market price becomes 47 it is good so when will you change the price beyond which it's better to shift up to that don't shift that's called as parity price so the formula is market price of convertible bond market price of convertible bond divided by mark uh, divided by conversion ratio so in this example a convertible bond is a 920 divided by ratio is a 20 so you'll get 46 rupees so if the market price of the share parity price 46 equal indifferent if it goes beyond 46 then converting it's better below 46 converting it not better that is parity price then one last one is called as down size risk this is given by uh, the market price of convertible bond minus straight value of the bond divided by straight value into 100. Uh, what is the downside risk in the sense? You are having convertible bonds. If conversion option not there, do you think the value will become zero? In the convertible bonds, if conversion option is not there, the company losing or company not making profits, sir, you are not likely to convert. If conversion value not there, if, if you are not getting converted, still some value is there in the bond because you are having the right to receive coupon, you are having the right to receive redemption price on maturity, that is called as straight value. Or you can also say non-convertible bonds. In convertible bonds, there will be some portion, some value of non-convertible bonds that is called as straight value bond. Suppose in this case, market price of convertible bond is 920, non-convertible bond is let's say 900 or let's say 850, 850 rupees. So even if the conversion is not there, still it's worth 850. So maximum loss is 920 minus 850, 70 rupees. That's called downsize. Even if conversion is not there, still you have some value. It's called a straight value. And divided by x to x percent percentage, some people divide by straight value, some people divide by market price of convertible bond. That uh, difference of opinion exists. You can use any one of them in examination conditions. Okay, so this is the important uh, terms associated with convertible bonds. Okay, <clears throat> hope you have taken down this approximate formula. Anyway, material should have all these formulas. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so for what we discussed, value of the bond, YTM, duration, volatility, convexity or convertible bonds, even YTM, uh, then uh, forward rate. All these are discussed from investor point of view. We only have one variety of problem which is discussed from uh, in issuer point of view, that is the problem on replacement of bond. replacement of bonds uh, do you remember uh, we had in uh, capital budgeting in your previous life long ago machinery should be replaced or not replacement problem on machinery you have an existing machinery you sell the existing machinery you replace the existing machinery right we used to compute npv if NPV of that is 
happen to be positive incremental NPV, then we say replace. A very similar situation. You are having an existing bond and you are trying to replace with new bonds. Existing bond you redeem and replace with new bond. So you are having two choices. One existing bond you continue or one more option is you redeem existing bond and issue new bond. So one option you continue, continue the existing bond and second option you redeem the existing issue the new bond. What is the difference? Incremental benefit. Differential, incremental. Incremental benefit incremental benefit. Why is it required? Why is that situation arises? <laughs> because of the practical scenario market factors, what is happening now? Suppose you have issued uh, 15 years back, 20 year maturity, 15 years back, 20 year maturity and 15 years back, what is the rate of interest prevailing then? Think from issuer point of view, maybe even 12%. 15 years over, 5 years pending. Still, you have to pay 12% only because committed, it is fixed. But now, if you look at outside, everybody is paying less interest. Because now in the market, interest rates have come down, but you can't do anything. You are having stomach burning. Everybody is paying less interest. I have issued this bond long time back. It's like mobile phone, no? You have purchased the mobile phone long time back. Nokia, double one, double zero. If you're using still today, you will not be using it. If it's using still today, what do you do? Everybody else using smartphone, but I'm, I purchased long time back. So what do you do? This existing one, let me take it off and new one I will buy. That's what here also we are doing. Existing bond, you pay it off, redeem it. Old bond, the new bonds, uh, let us issue, we can save uh, interest cost every year for five years, next five years remaining. So, those five years, not only you get benefit, it will have some cost also. And we are going to do cost benefit analysis and we'll compute NPV. How are we going to calculate that? Observe. I will divide the cash flows into three parts. Initial cash flow, interim cash flow, and terminal cash flow. And I am using this even in my capital budgeting also. Very easy to do it logical manner. Initially what happens uh, today? Interim, over a period of time what happens? And terminally what happens? Initial cash flow, if you continue the existing bond, then there is nothing, no cash flow today happening. You have already issued back. But if you redeem the existing one, then what you are going to do? You will have a redemption value outflow, right? Outflow, redemption of old bonds, existing bonds. And on this redemption, sometimes you have to pay premium. It's called as call premium. Why? Because it was having 20 years maturity. You're redeeming it earlier, like a repayment of your housing loan earlier, pre-closure. The holder will lose money. They charge you're redeeming earlier. Pay me premium. It's called as call premium. And this is an expense allowed for tax purposes. So I will do into 1 minus T. So, redemption of existing bond is outflow. But new bonds will come in. So, I will say issue of new bonds. That will come in. But when new bond comes in, it will not come free. You will have some issue expenses, underwriting charges, stamp duty charges, registrar's filing fees. So, you will have issue expenses, flotation cost, issue expenses. But I don't do 1 minus T now itself. 
because this issue expenses will not be allowed immediately. It is spread across over a period of time. And what about the old expenses? When the old bonds, issue, the existing bond issued 20 years back, it would have been spread across 20 years, 15 years only over, remaining 5 years still pending. That will be allowed for tax purpose immediately. So, remaining unamortized issue expenses, unamortized, unamortized old bonds, okay, unamortized issue expenses multiplied by T. So, these things are part of initial cash flow, uh, nothing in existing bond, these things you put together, that is in uh, replacing with new bond, then you calculate the increment. Okay. Every year, what do you get? Every year, you should focus on two types of cash flows. Existing bond, you pay existing interest rates. You pay existing interest rates, existing rate. If you redeem with the old bond, then you will pay with the new interest rate, which is lower interest rate. And both of them make it after tax. So, if it is after tax, I multiplied by 1 minus T. Then you find out the differential. And more importantly, this comes. Had you continue with the existing bond, this unamortized issue expenses still would continue. Had you continue with the old bond, so you will have this unamortization expenses. And if you continue with the new bond, then it will be new expense, amortization of issue expense, this is old, amortization of issue expense, this is old, now you will have amortization of issue expense, which is new. And issue expense is not a cash flow, it happened already, but what? why are we taking it now? It's tax impact. So, I should multiply it by T, like a depreciation. In both cases, you multiply it by T. That also, you find out the difference. Now, remember, this initial cash flow happens today. But interim cash flow happens every year. So, if every year happens, this incremental cash flow, if I bring it into present value, what should I do? I have to multiply it by annuity factor. When I multiply by annuity factor, I get the present value. And terminal cash flow, I get the redemption price, redeemable value under uh, existing bond, redeemable value under uh, new bond, difference multiplied by uh, discounting factor. This redemption value, if any difference is there, you multiply it by discounting factor. It happens on maturity, it happens only once. So, this initial will be outflow usually, interim will be inflow usually, terminal may be anything. NPV you calculate, if NPV is positive, we say redeem the bond. If NPV is negative, then we say do not redeem the bond. Very important concept where most students go wrong is on this amortization expenses. That is where institute, uh, that's where many people go wrong. And institute does not represent this in a columnar manner. So that's why if you follow this columnar manner, the problem becomes much easier faster and also uh, simpler to present in exams. So, this is one variety, only variety from issuer point of view. Okay. So, this is all about the bond valuation overview. Now, quickly, I will take you through a little bit of more theory concepts so that this initial discussion, I mean the summary discussion, we can conclude. Okay. Okay. So bond valuation is what we have discussed initially. YTM yield to maturity is the rate discounting rate at which present value becomes market price. Duration average holding period. Volatility, connection, relationship between uh, YTM and market price.
convertible bonds, various terminology, when to convert, conversion value, conversion ratio, parity price, downsize risk, conversion premium. Yield curve. Yield is the average rate applicable for certain number of years. Forward rate is the rate applicable for a particular year. And then bond replacement decision. That's only problem from issuer point of view. All other concept is from uh, investor point of view. Uh, topic wise allocation, it is there in the material. You can go through it. Like to discuss some theory points, just one second. Like we have types of bonds and all. Just give me one minute. Okay, so what is a bond? It's an instrument representing debt, like a loan taken, but main uh, uh, feature is it is tradable instrument, trading in the market. It's a fixed income security. We will have a face value. On face value only, we apply coupon rate. And coupon is uh, treated like a cash flow, not like an income. And frequency of repayment can be annually, quarterly, half yearly, and so on. And it will have a maturity period, just like a loan. Types of bonds. This one I would like to tell you now. Most of the bonds, what to discuss so far, is a fixed rate bonds. Where the coupon rate is a fixed at the beginning and that will not change. Interest rate and redemption price is fixed. Whereas we also have floating rate bonds where interest can fluctuate, the coupon rate can fluctuate with respect to the market rate that is called as floating rate bonds. So every year, next year, next coupon, how much you are going to do, it's fixed today and next year, next year. So every year, the rate of interest changes in line with the market that is floating rate bonds. Then we have types of bonds, four major types are there. Regular bonds, what we discussed so far, regularly you pay coupon and on maturity you pay redemption price. That is regular bond. We have annuity bonds. What is annuity bond? Like installment in your loan. You don't pay uh, repayment only at the end. You pay annuity value. Every year you pay principal as well as interest. Equal amount like installment. Like installment you repay. Like that, bonds also will be there, annuity bonds, like installments, which comprises of interest as well as principal. Perpetuity, where no repayment unless company winds up, meaning only coupon is paid, redemption price is not paid at all, it is ignored. So, it's only present value of interest, perpetuity, and formula-wise present value is given by annuity or whatever the cash flow, interest. Coupon divided by interest. That's all. No one plus R uh, circus. Just cash flow by rate of interest. You get perpetuity value. We have zero coupon bonds. Zero coupon, as the name suggests, also variety deep discount, where there is no coupon. 
that is only on maturity you will have no year one year two year three uh, coupon into annuity factor that will not be there only your redemption price so redemption price you multiply it by the discounting factor you get the present value of zero coupon points uh, valuation of bond which is discussed initial cash flow uh, market price interim cash flow coupon terminal cash flow redemption price uh, when i calculate present value using present value of coupon and present value of redemption price using required rate of return i get value of the bond but if i do the same thing coupon and the redemption price using ytms discounting rate then what i get is market price of the bond if nothing is specified in the problem we'll assume value equal to price and we'll assume required rate is equal to ytm if nothing else is specified in the problem so this is your complete picture of bond valuation okay so we'll stop at this point today uh, remaining portions we will take it from tomorrow onwards whatever the uh, pending part so stay for this point we'll see you tomorrow at the same time uh 6:15 okay 6:15 till then take care have a nice day bye bye